Hey guys, welcome back to Farpoint Restorations here in the mountains of North Carolina. Today I'll be taking a look at this. This is the NT624 Elite from Foxwell. Great mid-level scan tool. This one offers some really cool stuff. All makes, all systems, auto scan. Does have a nice size color screen. Free updates for life, and they mean it. And um, yeah, pretty nice stuff here. Some specs here, operational temperature, so on and so forth. But provides OBD1 and OBD2 vehicles all the way through the 21 year. I'm sure with updates that, that is newer than that. So I just picked this up. Oil service resets, including 49 um, electric parking brake. We got bi-directional uh, sensor data coming in. We can uh, do freeze frame tests. I mean, it just keeps going, right? I'll walk you through here and show you this baby out. Uh, this is a great tool and that's one that I've been looking forward to checking out here for a while. I've had uh, an older version of this and um, yeah, I've been looking forward to checking out their newish version. Nice case for it, nice like uh, hard case. Open that up. Now when I say mid-level scan tool, that means that this tool offers some features and functions that um, you know your basic GS, your general service technician, probably won't be using all that often. Uh, but uh, as he moves or she moves up in their career, well then suddenly and from out of nowhere, you will see that they do need all the extra features and functions. So first, let's take a look at the main unit. Up on top here, we do have a nice removable OBD2 port cord. And uh, button-wise here, we got our command buttons here. Return, OK, question, F1, F2, F3. It says here, Foxwell Automaster Pro. On the bottom, we do have our USB. And that little spot right there is a micro SD card. That is for upgrading the tool. And before I move on to the rest of it, well, let's go ahead and hook this thing up and you will see that it does in fact come with a cord and this is a cool little thing here it is on this side it is a USB so we can stick it into a PC you know you go on Foxwell's website you create an account tell them what tool you have and you can take out your micro SD card pop it in here and do an update with it so that's a really nice little setup they got there and that's pretty much it uh, case wise it's a hard plastic, you can kind of feel it there. And uh, input rating, you can see those this numbers there. So that's it. Let's go out to a car. All right, here we are in the car and uh, we got a whole bunch of stuff going on. History, that's gonna show us our cars that we've already looked up. Auto VIN, we'll try that in a second. OBD2, that's our generic entry into the car's systems instead of finding the exact car. Diagnostic, uh, that's just going into a different way to get into the car itself. Maintenance, we'll go into maintenance first. This is going to show us any kind of oil light resets, ABS, electronic parking brake, oil reset, steering angle sensor, or tire pressure sensor. So sometimes there's more things listed here. It depends on the car. And we'll back out of that. Settings, if we go into settings, we can change our language. We can change from metric to English. Shortcuts, you can see I've got Volvo. Well, let's go in there and add... For F2, let's, I'm playing with a Mitsubishi Outlander right now, so let's go ahead and we'll add that as a shortcut, and that way we can go back to those cars really quickly. And there we go. I click OK, and now Mitsubishi shows up down there. Really cool feature that kind of gets you right to it. If you want it to beep when you press a button, you hit that there. I don't, so I turned it off. Then we have display test, keypad test, and about. About tells you your software. I have not updated this one yet, so still probably from quite a while ago, but the car we're working on is an older car, so. All right, I'm gonna back out of here. Data manager, if I save freeze frames, if I take a drive and save the trip data, that's where I'd go back in there to uh, read that information. And lastly, update. Update is uh, if you want to, there's our SD card right there. You can get in there and update it while the unit's plugged directly into a computer through the USB port, or use that, uh, SD micro SD card adapter to USB to do it that way. I've tried both with these models and I prefer to take it out and update it on the computer. It seems to be a little bit faster. All right, so in this case, we're going to go in and find it manually. I've already saved Mitsubishi, so I'll press F2. We're going to manually select it. It is a 2005 model. We're going to go ahead and scan it. 
Okay, so it has gone through all 18 available systems and we end up with just uh, two codes in the SRS airbag. Sometimes those are false positives. We'll go ahead and find out. You press F3 and we get a report. So we had two stored codes for voltage low. These are probably codes that got set on startup when the battery was weak. So I'm not too, too uh, worried about that. But you can save this and this is where we can get back into our history. Press F1. File name required. Let's go ahead and press F3, and it is saved. All right, now I'll back out of that. And if I want to erase those codes, and I will, I'll press F1. It's asking, Are you sure? I am. There you go. And so now when it reread the codes, no fault found. So it did clear those codes for us. Yep, I want to exit out of here. All right, so that gives you an idea of the level you can get into with the uh, OEM level. Let's go into uh, generic OBD2 and let's take a look there. We'll scan for that. It should come up with one of the generic sides. All right, so it found it. All, while I was waiting, I went ahead and started the car because I do want to show you uh, some of the stuff this can do. So uh, monitors incomplete. So these are readiness monitors here. That's what you're reading. Eight readiness codes ready. So if I were driving this car and I had replaced, say, an O2 sensor or an EGR valve, and I wanted to know, is it good for state inspection? I need to go in here, because if the incompletes are more than one or two, chances are it will fail the uh, state inspections, at least here in North Carolina. Most states are similar. So it's happy. There's no codes. We do have all our readiness cleared. I'll press OK. And we can go in here, and I'll take a look at some of the live data on the generic side, too. We do have some component tests, some vehicle information, status. So we have some monitoring. But in this case, let's play with live data real quick. It's going to read all the available generic PIDs. And we can make a custom list, so we'll only turn on maybe a few of these. Fuel system status, calculated load. Let's go with, uh, let's go with that one. And go with RPM. And we'll go with airflow rate, okay? And we're going to press OK for F3, right? So we go in there, and here we go. Engine coolant temp is currently 122 or 124 and rising. Airflow calculated and RPM. You can see the RPM fluctuate. You can see my pounds per second, which I am used to the metric grams per second. Um, so I could change that back in the settings. And little by little, our temperature is coming up. If we want to see it in a graph form, go in here and here we go. Engine coolant temp is listed. Let's go to F2 and we'll see multiple graphs. There's the RPMs. So you get an idea how things are relating to each other, it's especially important with front and rear O2 sensor diagnostics. And then if you wanted to see them overlapping, if you had bank one and bank two O2 sensors, well, you could get an idea if one cylinder on one bank is having a problem. In this case, we're looking at two dissimilar things, but pretty cool, right? So it is a very uh, functional and very useful for diagnostics, if you know what you're looking at here. This is where mechanics live and die as in the industry. If we have a diagnostic issue, this is where we go to find our answers. We do some, we do some searching. And of course, we can save that file as well. If we want to, it is now recording, and that would be a playback. I could take a drive and take a look and see, hey, did this go from 145 degrees suddenly down to negative 60? Well, then I would know that my ECT was the problem. Stop it, and if we can save it, and we'll hit OK to save it as that. And that's it. Let's back out of here. All right, we're gonna back out of all this and wrap this thing up. Yep, we're getting out, we're getting out. And that's it. So there you go, guys. That is the Foxwell. And uh, it's not a bad scan tool. It is not a pro-level scan tool. And it is not a basic GS-level scan tool. It lies somewhere in between. You're going to give up some of the speed of a professional scan tool if you decide to purchase something like this. But in return for the slower speeds, you're going to get a lot of functions. You're going to be able to dig deeper than an, a general OBD2 scan tool is going to give you. Now you move up to a pro level scan tool, you'll get all these functions, maybe a few more, but you'll also get it a little bit quicker because the chip, the processor in here will probably operate a little faster. 
I guess that'll do it for today, my friends. I'll leave a link where you can buy this down in the description below. And if you like the video, well, maybe think about liking and subscribing. And I'll see you next time. Take care.